Welcome back. It's been a week since we plowed our first corn, and so now I'm gonna run the water for a plow. And I'm gonna show you what we're doing there and let you look at the corn too. It's grown a good bit since last week. It's about knee high. This is the oldest corn. We're just gonna run the water for a plow on the oldest corn, and I'm probably gonna plow the last corn, the third one, like I did last week on the first and second. This is a water fur a plow. It's an eight row. We've got these middle busters like this. It'll make a big V there in the bottom of the row and make that water run easy. If you can see now, we've got a pretty good water furrow right here. And we won't disturb it anymore. Obviously the corn's about to get too big anyway, but that'll stay there until we get ready to start watering it. All right, this is the second corn. You can tell it's grown a pretty good bit too since last week. This is my last corn. We're getting ready to plow it with my cultivator like we did the first and second corn last week. All right, while I had the cultivator hooked up, I decided to go ahead and plow these oldest peas. We usually plow all of our peas at least twice, sometimes three times. You know, we'll use that same water for a plow when we get ready to water and use that as the last cultivation. So we do it several times. You know, theoretically, your chemical still should be on top of the row where you don't disturb it, uh, but it'll wear off after a while. We will have to hoe the peas probably at least once, go over it at least one time later on. So we have the uh, Henniker cultivator, which I've already shown you is what we're using now. And then we've also got a rolling cultivator. We may use it uh, later too as well. If you remember on a, some of our first videos, we were putting out fertilizer in the peach orchard and we told you we'd come back and put out some more nitrogen later. So that's what I'm doing now. It's ammonium sulfate and it'll be another 50% of our nitrogen plus some sulfur. And then that's all the fertility we'll do on the peaches. We do put some foliar fertilizer in there with the insecticide every time we spray which just gives it a little boost, but this is the, the primary fertilizer. Yeah, we're getting some size on the peaches, so they're looking nice. out the peas it's time to put our first insecticide on the peas we usually do every planting of peas probably three applications of insecticide one after it gets up you know it has a couple of true leaves and then we'll do another one about halfway through maturity and then we'll do the third one uh, right when it's putting on pods Thrips are usually bad on peas, or they usually are for me anyway. So you start seeing a little bit of crinkled leaves right about now when they're up, you know, six inches tall, maybe three or four true leaves. It's when you start seeing the leaves crinkle and that's usually thrip damage. So that's when it's time to spray.
That's the first tomato that I've seen, and I walked around this morning, and I've seen a few more like it kind of scattered here and there. It's May the 9th, and we had a half an inch of rain last night, so that's going to delay the fertilizer that I was wanting to put out on my potato and late watermelon ground. We've got rain chances to the next few days, so we'll have to see how that goes. We're planting the cucumbers this morning, the regular cucumbers and the pickling cucumbers. This will be the first planting of those. These are our bell peppers. They're looking pretty nice too. They've grown a lot recently. These are the oldest ones. And we had some high winds last night with our storms and this is what happens. It wasn't completely broke off, but I broke it off. But what it does is it, when you get a high wind, just right on, rub it on that string. If you got too much sticking up, it'll break it off. Usually it doesn't happen after we put the second string. Usually it's only when the first string is up and they'll break with the high wind. But we had a few last night scattered here and there. So we're gonna put the third string today obviously once that happens that, that plant's done right there so far we put the string every seven days and so we're probably going to have to keep that up sometimes you can go longer but they're really growing fast so you don't want them to flop over and break off like what happened last night so first tomatoes are growing fast the second tomatoes are are not but hopefully they'll catch up and if nothing else it'll give us a good kind of gap between them so we won't have too many ready at one time. Second tomatoes have been out here for two weeks, but basically the first week you cancel out as nothing because it was cold. So they're coming around. Some of them are still small. They just haven't really had the roots to catch hold to take off yet, but hopefully we'll see a difference this week. Uh, these are my second these that I was saying that came up slow. I think I mentioned that on the video last week, but they all came up finally, came up good. These are the third ones. You know, a little over a week behind the other ones. You can see they're, most of them have popped up. So it looks like we got a good stand here. Ought to get good activation on this chemical here. We had a good, good amount of rain on it, so it ought to do a good job for a while. All right, and since it was too wet to put out my fertilizer today, we're cutting grass in the peach middles. It needed it, it's been a while since we've done it. So one of the things on my list, so we're knocking it out today, we're gonna need to come back and spray under the trees pretty quick. As much rain as we've had and warming up, but weeds and grass are starting to come up pretty good under the trees. Believe it or not, we're still thinning the peaches. I've had some extra help and they've uh, been at it for about three weeks. I was hoping to finish today, maybe. If not, tomorrow for sure. So that'll be the end of that and after that all we'll have to do is just keep the peaches sprayed and clean under the trees water them if we have to and then uh, that's pretty much it as far as the maintenance from here on out the rest of the summer all right it's wednesday morning i'm looking around in the field a little bit it's gonna start raining here in a little while it looks like these are my oldest cantaloupes right here There you go, first little baby cantaloupe that I've seen so far this year. I would say it would take it about a month, give or take a little. Well, it's raining off and on today. They're talking about maybe big rain tonight. I hope not. We've got so much to do. We don't need multiple inches, but we'll see. I'll let you know tomorrow what happens there. but. We're getting everything ready in the greenhouse. We've got about 280 trays. Fill up the dirt, punch the holes, have them ready. We're gonna start planting the late watermelons tomorrow, red and yellow. And then we'll wait about a week and plant the late can.
cantaloupes. So that's the plan for the next day or two. Well, as you can see, the ditches are full. That means we got a lot of rain, which we did. It rained three inches in one location for us and four inches in the other. I don't know that it's over for today. I hope it is, but the worst of it is anyway. It was uh, like a monsoon this morning from about 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. for about three hours. We've got some of our smallest peas underwater right now. It'll all run off. I just hope it runs off in time before it kills them. They can withstand, you know, a little while underwater, but they can't take it too long. So we'll see. We'll know more tomorrow. It'll it'll look different in the morning, I hope. I was hoping that we weren't going to get as much as they were predicting, but they were right. So it's Thursday morning and we're pretty much out of the field for at least the rest of the week. Tractor wise, we can get out there and do some hand stuff, hopefully tomorrow. But that's just gonna put us a little bit behind, but we'll just have to try to catch up. Right now the forecast looks okay for next week. It's not rain free completely on the forecast, but we may have to pull a couple of 24 hour shifts if we get some dry weather in there. But uh, that's kind of the status as of now. We did get everything planted this morning that we needed to in the greenhouse. We got our second pickling and second regular cucumbers planted. We got all of our red late watermelons and all of our late yellow watermelons. Abuscalo. According to my rain gauge calculations, that's about 15 inches of rain we've had since the 2nd of April. So a little bit on the excessive side, it seems like it, you know, comes kind of extreme, even though we had a dry stretch there in mid April where we got dusty and kind of needed some rain, you know, it, we've had some pretty big rain totals in that stretch. All right, it's Friday morning, looking around a little bit. Water's draining off pretty good. It's still got some water in those youngest peas. It looks better than it did yesterday, but we need it to keep on running off. It's running, it's just slow. Uh, what I just showed you there was uh, cucumbers that we planted last week. Try to get them staked today. We're also putting the string on the youngest tomatoes this morning. These are the youngest tomatoes that we're putting the first string on right here. And you can look over there and see the size difference of the oldest ones. Well, I was looking for something to do on my list and about the driest thing that I could do was come down here and spray underneath the trees with the hood. Y'all seen us do, do this in one of our earlier videos, and it's time to do it again. We'll come back next week and do the little dolly on top of the row. And it's kind of better if we don't do it all at one time because if we do this first, we can kind of see how far we need to go off the side of the bed with the dolly. So it makes it a little easier where we don't miss anything. It'll give this time to work and then when we come back with the dolly we can we can tell what's green and what's dead. forwarded all the way till Monday and we're back on the planter getting our fourth piece planted right now we're going to plant this block in 75% purple hulls and 25% zipper creams 
this will be our our big planting of zipper creams the ones we planted first were, were not as many and we probably will not plant any more zipper creams after this It'll probably just be purple holes from here on out we got some spraying done over the weekend but we haven't really been able to get in the field much with the big stuff or tillage or planting or whatever until now I thought I was going to get started this morning. It's after lunch right now, but we had a little bit of rain on Sunday night, so we needed the sun to come out a little bit and dry it up. So that's what we're doing, and the guys have got the third cantaloupes planted this morning on the plastic. That'll be the last cantaloupe planting on the plastic, and they're getting the first squash planted this morning. This will be the first of two plantings on the squash. Squash goes at 18 inches on the spacing on the plastic. I think I mentioned on one of the earlier videos that we normally plant five plantings of peas and we're going to bump it up to seven. Well, I was wrong. We normally plant six plantings of peas and we're going to bump it up to eight. So this will complete number four so we're halfway through with the pea planting all right i'm looking around on tuesday morning early right there it's the first red watermelon that i've seen right there by my finger may the 16th probably take it about a month or a little longer well i'm finally getting to put out my fertilizer i've been trying to do that for a week Rain chances again tonight. It's been raining in the area almost every evening. We missed it last night. I think after tonight we get a few days of no rain. So hopefully we'll miss it tonight and I can get all this done. It takes me several days to do what I'm about to do. I'm just going to go down a list and tell you what I'm going to do for the next couple of days and then we'll get some video of it and we'll be able to see. Right now I'm putting out fertilizer on the late watermelon ground. It's a 16-16-32-2 dry. We'll put it out all pre-plant on these watermelons. We won't put out any more after today. And then we're also going to put out potash, which is potassium, on my sweet potatoes. I've got two different fertilizer buggies. We'll come back after we transplant on the sweet potatoes a couple of weeks and put out our nitrogen on the on those after i put out this this morning i'm gonna run my do all on everything and then the next thing will be put out my soil insecticide i do that on the watermelons and the sweet potatoes sweet potatoes it's very important to put out your soil insecticide because those grubs and all will chew on the little potatoes and it, it lasts all season. But we also found when we rotate the potatoes and the watermelons, we had some problems with the little watermelon plants too when we didn't have a soil insecticide. So that's why we do it on those also. So when we put out the soil insecticide, we immediately come back and rehip it that way it'll be in kind of in the row and it'll be there all season then we come back and roll everything and make it flat and then we don't disturb it anymore I'll come back and put out my herbicide on my watermelon ground we we'll use halo sulfuron and then I'll switch and put out valor on my sweet potato ground and then we won't do anything until it rains so we'll probably look at planting everything maybe in about two weeks we'll probably lay out our poly pipe irrigation pipe next week and then I'll come back and do between where I'm gonna plant my watermelon rows we put out valor in the middles and we'll do that before we plant let it rain on it and then 
it'll be time to plant. So it's kind of a long process. It takes a few days, and if you get some rain, it stretches it out. But that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna show you some video. Won't try to bore you to death with with uh, too much of that, but you'll be able to, to see it. Today, the guys are spraying with the peach dolly right on top of the row underneath the peach trees. And they're putting the fourth string on the oldest tomatoes. And if you hadn't already kind of figured out, I have my things to do, they have their things to do. A lot of times we're not even together much at all during the day, so a lot of times I can't film what they're doing because I'm off doing something else. But that's kind of how it works with us. We're headed back to put out my herbicide on that ground we just rolled. Doing the watermelons now, and then we'll come back in the morning and do the sweet potatoes after we clean out the tank. Kind of spread out two weeks worth of stuff into one video. I normally just do one week's worth of content, but since we had that big rain, kind of right in the middle, I spread it out to two weeks. So I appreciate y'all watching. Subscribe to us if you haven't already. We would appreciate it. And see y'all next time.